Yo, what's up, guys? Happy Tuesday. I believe it's Tuesday, June 16th. Yeah, I think that's a Tuesday. Uh, happy Tuesday. Hopefully, you guys are having an amazing start of your day, start of your week. Uh, but uh, yeah, just wanted to jump on here, keep it uh, consistent. And today is, uh, what is today as far as how many? We're at 84. Uh, today, we are at uh, Coffee Talk session number 80. Or some of you have been uh, here just about every single one, so I want to thank you guys for that. But some of you might be new, and if you are, well, welcome to the uh, well the coffee talk. This is where uh, we get to uh, hang out, talk a little bit of shop, talk a little bit of life, and uh, hopefully get you to get out there and make some stuff happen. Today, I am going to be talking about something that I've done a lot in the past, but also will give you ideas to discover some hidden content that people are actually already paying for. So why not check that out, right? Um, so that's what we're going to be talking about. I'm going to share with you uh, some examples of what this looks like. Uh, you know, we have been, we have been talking uh, recently quite a lot actually about creating a digital product of some kind. Um, and there is a, a pretty simple way to do this. Uh, I actually talked about it yesterday. I believe it was yesterday. I don't know. The days are starting to blend into each other, but I did talk about it on a past coffee talk on how we can plan out our content and almost build a, not almost, we will be building out assets that we can then bundle and then put into a uh, digital product. Um, and that's really um, what this will help us do is, you know, at the same time. But the other thing is, is when you're creating this content, we also, we also can be, uh, you know, creating content that can get found and searched on Google. Um, so I did want to kind of just cover that real quick. And then from there, we'll go ahead and we'll jump into this uh, hidden content uh, strategy that I want to share with you guys. So, uh, let's see who we got. Who we got popping in here today. Let's see. We got Troy in the house. What's up, Troy? Oh, Troy, just to let you know, I did get your uh, Facebook message. Um, I will, uh, I'll message you back brother. Um, and, uh, we'll dig into that. And it might be a fun little experiment to kind of do a little, uh, maybe a little hot seat for you inside of brand creators Academy. Uh, what's up, Justin? What's up morning crew? Uh, good morning, brand rockers. Kay's got it down. Uh, Kate, good morning. Will uh, will there be some sort of celebration on a hundred coffee talk? There should be, huh? Um, well, maybe we'll do a little giveaway or something. I don't know. We'll we'll play with that. We've we've got a few episodes to kind of think about that. If you guys have any ideas, let me know. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. I already just read that. Your consistency is totally motivating and appreciated. Yeah, no problem, Kate. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's something that's part of my, my day now. Uh, and, uh, I try to keep these under a half hour, but sometimes they go over to an hour. So I do allow an hour, but I typically want to be, uh, done in about 30 minutes. Hey, Salama, what's up? How are you doing this morning? So guys, do me a favor. If you are tuning in, just drop something in the comments. Let me know that you're there. Uh, let me know how your morning is going. Um, all right. So let me also say this. Um, and, and again, if you guys are watching this later, I know a lot of people are watching this as a replay. So if you are watching this as a replay, hello, welcome. Uh, we would love to have you here live, but it's okay. I get it. You know, like you have things to do other than just, uh, hang out with us during our coffee talk, having some morning coffee together. But let me ask you something. I've been talking a lot about this lately and I didn't intend on this happening, by the way, this is kind of how you show up. You start to talk about certain topics in your industry. And then the, uh, the audience, you in this case, kind of let me know what, uh, what we should be talking about or what we should be teaching further. And one of those things is creating a digital product. I started talking about that. And then you guys started having a lot of really great questions and wanted to know more. I actually hold our, uh, members inside of brand creators Academy as well. And, um, and they want to see this as well. So um, that's what I'm going to be doing is, is really sharing more of this. And, uh, we're doing actually something a little bit behind the scenes right now that we're putting together a little digital product offer, which I'm going to be sharing inside of brand creators Academy as a little experiment. 
We're actually going to build this thing. We're actually going to start running Facebook ads to it. And we're going to see if we can turn it into some sales. Um, so it's going to be a little experiment um, with some, uh, some digital assets that I've kind of had on the shelf. And it has nothing to do with, uh, with this area of, uh, or this market of, you know, how to build a blog, how to make money online type of thing. It's totally separate. It's outside of that. Um, so we're going to play with that and that's going to be happening inside of brand creators Academy. So if you guys are in the Academy, well, you can look forward to that. That is going to be coming down the pipeline. Uh, so, uh, Hey, Deborah, what's up? How are you, Jana? How are you doing? Good morning, uh, Justin. Oh, don't take don't forget to take a sip of that coffee. I appreciate you, Justin, for reminding me. If you guys are new, uh, I, I need a reminder every now and then, or this stuff will get cold. All right, so let's um let's kind of talk about this real quick before I jump into this little hidden uh, this little hidden strategy uh, as far as finding some hidden content that people are paying for. All right. So first off, let me just kind of set the stage here. And like I said, we've been talking about this quite a bit. And that is how do we find content that people are searching for and that people would be willing to pay for? So I'm not talking about a full-fledged course. I'm talking about creating something that could be a digital guide or a download or downloads of some kind, okay? That's what we're talking about here. This here, I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. It's a perfect example. This is a digital download, can be printed but it's a digital download. It's 107 pages. And, uh, that there is now a, uh, a paid asset. Okay. But the information inside of here also was created through a podcast. It was created through blog posts. And then we just compiled it and turned it into a book. Okay. A guide that helps you build a brand. The same thing can happen in your business, but we need to know, like, what are those topics that are sequential in a process or learning something that you can turn into a digital product. That's basically it in a nutshell is what we're doing is we're trying to figure out what is that, what is that thing? Number one, what is the thing that people want to learn how to do? And then how do you create content and then bundle that up and make a digital guide out of it? Okay. The easiest way for you to create a digital product is going to be a digital guide or a digital book something like this, an ebook also known as, okay, that's going to be the easiest way. And also why it's the easiest way is because we can actually publish content on our website and then we can wrap it up into a nice little bundle and we can create a digital book. Okay. So what I want to do today, now that I've set the stage, so you guys understand where I'm coming from, if you are just tuning in, um, for the first time, um, but what we, what we want to do is we want to figure out what are people willing to pay for? What are people looking for that they would pay for? And there's almost anything in your market. There's probably something, if you can shortcut something, there's probably something that people would be willing to pay for. It's just, they will. Okay. So let me just share with you this little hidden content finding strategy. All right. So what I always do, and it's going to vary depending on markets. But what I'm always going to do is typically I'm going to go over to uh, something like this here. Okay. Amazon and Kindle. Okay. So let me get over here now. So basically if I'm looking to, uh, let's say I'm into uh, bass fishing and I'm going to be creating bass fishing blog posts, right? Well, I've probably already started to address some of these common questions. Okay. But if I want to know exactly what has already been bundled up, what has already been talked about that people are already paying for, okay? So I'm going to go over here to Kindle and I'm going to say, okay, let's see, are there any Kindle books that have already been created, okay? And so I just did a quick search for bass fishing. I pulled this one up. I don't know anything about this book at all, okay? And I'm just looking here at, uh, let's see here, bass fishing tips and tricks for catching largemouth bass. Fishing guide, freshwater, fishing bass, fishing books, how to fish. So this person is clearly trying to get search traffic. I don't even care about that, okay? All I'm doing is I'm trying to see someone's already done the research to kind of compile what an ebook would look like, right? So I can click on this, and this is going to bring up the preview. And then I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to look at the introduction. But then I'm going to look at this. This is the chapters. This is what is being discussed in this. These are technically blog posts, okay? Now, 
we'd have an introduction. That's just going to be in the book itself. It's not going to be necessarily uh, in your blog post, although it could be introduction to bass fishing. That could be it, right? About largemouth bass. So maybe it's all of the things that you need to know, their instincts, where they, you know, where they hang out, like, uh, you know, their, uh, you know, their, um, you know, different types of year, like how do they, you know, how do they react in certain temperature, like all that stuff, right? You can talk a little bit about that and just kind of touch on those things. Then we could go into prime bass locations. So now we need to talk more about the locations in this one section. This one blog post is going to be all about the prime locations for catching bass, right? The next one's going to be feeding habits. We're going to write a whole blog post on their feeding habits, what you need to know and why you need to know about their feeding habits, right? Uh, you're um, equipping yourself, okay? How are you going to be prepared to go out there and uh, and catch bass? What's all the things that you should know so you have the, the best chance of going out there and being prepared, right? Knots, I, I guess that's like tying a knot. So maybe it's like certain style of knots to, um, again, I have known nothing about bass fishing, so I could be totally wrong, but maybe there's a certain style of knot because there's, they, they, if on a large mouth, maybe they're stronger and we want to make sure that we don't lose them. Right. Um, artificial bait. Okay. So that there would be a blog post, how to catch bass using artificial bait, right? That's a blog post live bait, how to catch bass using live bait. Another blog post, right? Getting a bite and reeling it in. Um, how to uh, how to never lose, uh, a bash, a ba a bass when you have them on the line or have them on the line, something like that, right? Bank versus boat fishing. Okay. That's a whole nother blog post, boat fishing, bank fishing, additional bass fishing tips. Conclusion. You just need to figure out, is there a six of these or eight of these that you could take and turn into a blog post? Obviously, if you're looking to catch bass, these are some topics that you should be addressing. So these are just ideas for you to take a set of blog posts, start writing them, okay, or have them written, and then you compile them into something like this, all right? So this is just one example, okay? Uh, now, let me get out of there, and let me go over here. There's another one. How to crochet, a complete guide for absolute beginners, okay? This one here has 1,180 ratings, by the way, which is crazy, so you know that thing is selling. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go in here, how to crochet. Okay. Now this is going to be a little bit more image based that that's fine. Right. Um, so if I go down here, here's the table of contents. Okay. Introduction tools. Okay. The tools you, that you need to know about for uh, crochet uh, tool are yarns, holding the hook, holding the yarn, making a slip knot, yarn over hook, chain stitch, a double crochet stitch, half treble stitch, treble uh, crochet stitch, slip uh, stitch, all of this stuff, right? So now could we compile three or four of these into one article, maybe about certain types of slip knot? Maybe, right? But again, all I'm doing is I'm going through here and seeing what people are already paying for, okay? They're already buying this. Now, the other thing is, is this person is selling it for $2.99, okay? I know for a fact that I could probably sell that same book for $9.99 and someone would be willing to pay for it. Now, the reason why you're not really able to do that on Kindle as much is because the standard price typically is between $2.99 and maybe $5.99, even $4.99, right? Anything above that, it's like, no, you don't pay for that. You don't pay that high on Kindle. So that's why a lot of times you might not want to list it here on Kindle. You might just want to sell it on your own website for $9.99 or $19.99. Um, this book right here, if you were to buy a magazine that had this here in it, you'd probably spend $15.99, maybe even $19.99. We've all seen it. So again, don't underestimate what you can charge for it just because it's selling for $2.99 here. They're just not, uh, they're not selling it on their own website, which they probably should be in this case. Okay. And hopefully they would have something here that would get people over to join an email list. Um, which it doesn't look like they do. So uh, one little tip here is in your book, if you were ever doing a Kindle book, you want something right here in the beginning that says um, something like uh, download or watch our free video series on how to use these patterns. And then they would click on that and then they would go over to your landing page. Another little, a little uh, hack here, if you will, is if you do that in the first 10 pages, it will show up in the preview just like this here. 
Okay. And then even if they don't buy the book, they can go over to your, your landing page. Um, so yeah, so they don't have anything here. So my guess is they probably aren't, uh, that familiar with marketing. Um, because this is a great book, by the way, great book. Um, not hard. Look at just screenshots. That's all. See, that's all nothing big. Okay. So again, I want you to start thinking about your own market and how you could do this. All right. All right. Let me go on to the next one here. Okay. How to housebreak your dog in seven days. Okay. Who doesn't want to house break their dog in seven days? Now, here's the other thing I want to say. This is not how to train your puppy, which that could be a book. This is very specific. Someone wants to housebreak their dog in seven days. This book is very specific. Okay. If someone comes to your site, that this is a perfect example. If you were to sell this book on your website or in your digital funnel, as we've talked about in the past, right? All you need here is one little free lead magnet that would say, uh, here's five tips to help housebreak your dog in the next seven days, right? And then you would give them five tips in that little, in that little cheat sheet, right? And on the thank you page, you'd have the entire book for just $9.99. See how that just happened? I'm going to give them some tips, but I'm going to give them more tips inside of the full book. So that's how you would do that. Um, so this is a perfect example of that. So how to house break your dog in seven days revised, letting people know it's been updated. 662 reviews or ratings, which is pretty good. And they're selling it for $9.99, by the way, and people are paying it. Okay. This is on Kindle. All right. So you definitely could get more for that. Um, so I just want to look down here now. Actually, I do this too. And I look how long this is 84 pages long, probably a lot of images and stuff. It was produced in 2009 guys. Uh, so yeah, so it's, uh, it's number 90 in dog training on Kindle. It's pretty good. Okay. So I'm going to click on here, how to house break your dog in seven days. Let's see here. Here's the contents. Here's the, basically the you know, chapters, introduction, the psychology of training, the secret of successful housebreaking. When is my dog ready to be housebroken? The very young puppy. What about older dogs? Your choice, housebreaking, paper training, or litter pan training, the seven-day formula, establishing regular eating habits, confining your dog to a den, housebreaking, paper training, and litter pan training. So see, these become blog posts now. You can start to see this, right? Because this here is, is, uh, letting you know that eating habits are also going to, to do with that. So you might want to, that might be like one tip to, uh, you know, housebreak your dog. Uh, but this here, paper training and litter pan training, that one, there's a blog post choosing the schedule that's right for you. The power of praise, uh, corrective training is easy with a little patience and love dogs can smell odors. Even when you can't housebreaking and paper training problems. So it's a lot of it's paper training or pan training any of that stuff. So let's see also down here. I don't see any lead magnet in here at all. Um, so again, this, this uh, person should uh, probably have that in there. Uh, but let me do something here while we're, while we're on, uh, let's go to this one. Okay. This is another one, almost identical, by the way, look at this, that how to house break your dog in seven days. The author is uh, Shirley Calstone, right? And this here is Ken Phillips. Same exact idea, guys, right? 295 ratings, uh, 77 pages, very small. And this was produced in 2015, okay? And this is, oh, this one here is number seven in dog training, okay? Eight in dog breeds. So this one here is probably doing a little bit better, actually. Um, so let's go ahead and look on the inside. Let's see if they're trying to get my email address up front here. Let's see. No, not seeing it. Not seeing it. Man, they really need to do that, but they're not, but you guys can, uh, and I would show you how to do that. Um, no, I can't do it here. I can't actually show you, but that's definitely what we're going to be working on when we build this out. But okay. So again, table of contents, chapter one, puppy psychology, chapter two, viewing the world through your pup's eyes, uh, using positive reinforcement, using mother nature to your advantage, choosing and using a crate, choosing a crate. Introducing the crate, what you'll need, methods of housebreaking, paper training, crate training, litter pan training, crazy training plan. Chapter eight, creating a schedule for your puppies. Again, this is all, these could be all blog posts. The psychology 101 of a puppy. Viewing the, wor the world through your pup's eyes. I'm not sure that could be its own, 
but maybe you can you can use that along with you using positive reinforcement to better train your dog while uh, housebreaking, something like that. So again, just an idea of what people are willing to pay for. Now, this is something outside. And actually, he's selling that for $3.99, by the way. Um, but the other thing I wanted to do is I went over to ClickBank and I looked over there. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by this here selling a guide, a manual, okay, for more than $3.99, I believe. But this is a full fledged sales page. But what I'm doing here is I'm going to look at this is. This is the things that people are struggling with, okay? Would your bass fishing experience improve significantly if you knew practically everything a pro knows about bass fishing? Imagine what your bass fishing experience would be like. So me, immediately, I want to imagine that, right? Because he just told me to. No matter where you fish, you could locate bass on lakes, reservoirs, rivers, or ponds. You would know how to land bass in all four seasons. When conditions change, you could adapt with different techniques and still feel uh, fill your uh, live well. You would be able to establish a pattern to land bass that matches any situation you're fishing. So all these things are what I want as a bass fisherman, right? Read on to find out how your bass fishing experience will change forever, okay? In my pro bass fishing training manual, you will discover this is everything that's going to be taught. How to avoid locations that hold few concentrations of fish because 90, 95% of the bass are located in 5% of the water. Once you know where the bass are concentrated, your results go up dramatically. I want to know that. Where to get the best maps that detail the uh, kind of habitat where bass will stack up. Time-tested and proven strategies to completely research an unfamiliar familiar body of water. So all of these can be topics that I can address in blog posts. Okay? All of them. Uh, this is a new product as of yet. I have not had any feedback. I hope you'll be telling me things like this after using my training manual. Right? So these aren't even real testimonials in a sense. They're just like what he hopes to get from you, which is kind of funny. And then he has some free bonuses, the essential bass tackle box guide, right? So maybe you're going to write a whole blog post on what's the essential bass tackle ba box guide. There's your bonus. Another bonus, successful strategies for hunting trophy bass. Another bonus, right? Uh, smart techniques to probe thick vegetation for monster bass blog post, the bass fishing tournament primer, mm, maybe how to prepare for a bass fishing tournament, everything you need to know. Um, this one here, things you need to know if you're thinking of turning pro, okay? That could be a blog post, right? Proven techniques to obtain pro sponsorship, blog post. All right, so all of this stuff, $27, guys, $27. So here's what I like about this. It's $27. This technically could be our main offer, okay, that we're selling. And we can sell this. Maybe we sell this for... I don't know. Maybe we sell it for $9.99. Re uh, regular price is $19.99. And then what we do is we have an upsell or a bump, as we call it, that we take all of these bonuses and we bundle them up and we sell those, right? So there's a lot we can do with digital assets once we create them. But this is a perfect example that that's this same book could probably sell or only would sell on Kindle for pro probably like, I don't know, $2.99 up to $9.99, right? But here, you're going to get more and you should get more. This is a great guide. I would want that. I would pay $27 to know all that stuff. Okay. So we can take all of this and look at our competition or look at others that are doing it and get ideas for uh, coming up with content ideas for our site. So even if you don't do this, as far as getting it to be a paid digital product, just use it as content ideas. People are paying for this. So they're going to find it valuable. All right. So make sure that you take this and you apply it to your market, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get back out of there. Any questions on that, guys? Was that useful? Was that helpful? Let me know. All right, yes, we have a few questions here. Uh, Karen says, hey, good morning, I'm taking action. Good, Karen, I'm glad. What's up, Mike? Good morning, Mr. Smiley. Rebecca's in the house. Hi, coffee crew. Debbie is up. Hey, what's up, Debbie? Uh, let's see. Are there any circumstances under which you would still consider selling on Kindle? Yes, I would. But that would be a different, uh, a different strategy in a sense. I would use Kindle as a way for me to build my email list, not necessarily someone that just bought the book. 
Um, because here's the deal. When you are able to uh, put your book on Kindle, you do get the benefits of people searching for your topic on Kindle. Totally. The downside is, is if you sign up with KDP, which is the Kindle private, uh, their, their private selling platform where you're locking up your book on their platform for, I think, I think at least 90 days, um, you're not really able to sell it outside of what you're charging for on Kindle. They want you to be able to uh, just exclusively put it there. Um, so the only way that that makes sense is if you if you sell the guide, you can sell it for $4.99 if you want. You just might not get that many sales. Or you can sell it for $2.99 or $1.99 or $0.99 cents or anything. But the real idea there is to have a somewhat of a paid lead magnet there and then also get the email inside of the guide that will lead them over to a bigger um, investment right? Or a, a thing that would lead them to the next thing, the next logical thing that would help them, right? So like I said, you'd, you'd want to map that out. You'd want to map out your lead magnet that would be inside the book. So like if you're teaching bass fishing, it would be like, you know, um, go watch our six part video series of us, uh, you know, scoping out ponds, something like that. Right. And then that makes me want to go there. And then when I go there, I'm going to go to a landing page and I'm going to opt in. And when I opt in, I'm going to, uh, to be able to go to the, uh, you know, to, to the, uh, the resource that I promised. And then when I'm building that email list and the cool thing is if you put it in the front of the book, you're able to, uh, also, that's also, uh, able to be seen by people that are just previewing the book and not even buying it yet. So that's what I would do. Uh, thoughts on bundling a couple of ebooks, or is that complicated for download? It's not complicated to download. You would just take those, put them into one folder, and then zip it. And then from there, you would just make that a a you know one time download. Uh, would your readers ask for a refund if they discover your blog post and ebook has similar content? No, I've never experienced that to be honest with you, and I've done this numerous times. Uh, but the difference is, is you're not just going to copy the blog post verbatim. You're going to edit it. You're going to make it original in a sense, but it's going to be very similar content. Perfect example of this. You know, people want this, even though they know that they can go to the podcast and listen to episodes or, you know, read blog posts. They want it in this form and they're willing to pay $4 and 99 cents for it. Um, so yeah, don't underestimate that. Um, but no, I've never had that happen. I've never had anyone email me ever. Okay. Out of, Probably 15 years that I've done this, never had anybody email me and say, hey, Scott, I noticed that a lot of your stuff is is uh, on your podcast and I just bought your book and um, I noticed that some of it is on there too. Why would I want the book? Well, you bought the book because you want something that you can actually download and print versus the other, right? I've never had anybody say that. Not just in this market, in other markets too, ever. Um, other ideas to monetize in small ways while building a list before creating a digital course. It's not a digital course. Let's not let's not um, uh, mistake uh, those for the same. They're they're not. Um, this is not a course. This is a digital ebook, which is going to be easier than creating a digital course. Um, so I would say the quickest way to monetize your um, email list, your blog, whatever, is to give them free value by creating content on your website or through a you know video whatever and then having them opt in for something free and then in turn giving them an opportunity to purchase something and in this case it would be a digital uh, guide of some kind uh let's see kate is there uh any advantage to pricing your ebook at a lower cost like 9.99 versus 3.99 you got to test it kate if we're talking about Kindle, there is a thing there because if your book is below, I think, $2.99, you might get more eyeballs because they're going to put you in books less than five bucks or something like that. There's different categories and stuff. But if we're talking about selling it on our own website, it's to me, you, you got to test that with your own traffic and with your own offers. And it doesn't mean just because you sold it for $3.99 once, you can't raise the price to $9.99. There could <laughs> excuse me, there could come a day that I charge $9.99 for this or maybe $15.99 for this. I, I I honestly believe this is worth $20 all day long. Um, but I want to get it in as many people's uh, hands as possible. And $4.99 is just like a happy medium for me. 
for that. But again, just understand that this also has other components to it, right? So this has an audiobook that you can purchase. This has a masterclass that you can purchase, and then you can join Brand Creators Academy. So you want to understand that there's other ways um, that you can monetize, but also deliver value on a regular basis through doing that. Um, so you, you got to test that. It's always about testing and to see if if um, if the price really matters. Um, all right. Uh, can you repeat what you were saying about the lead magnet in the first 10 pages of the ebook email address? I didn't catch that. Yeah. So basically you want to create some type of lead magnet and you would want to put that in the first, uh, probably first three pages. And it would be just like additional things that would help them with what they just purchased or a more, more of a visual thing, right? Or maybe it's a checklist in there right? Or maybe it's a small little cheat sheet, right? <clears throat> so what you would say is something like, um, download, uh, our free, maybe it's three videos, uh, walking through the process, three videos, uh, or, uh, our three part video series showing exactly how we find the best spot to fish, right? Then you're going to be like, oh, I want to see that. And then boom, you click on it and go over. So that link right there would be a link that you would have embedded into your, into your Kindle or into your ebook. And it would just be a hyperlink. It would go over to your landing page and that's it. And then when they go to the landing page, that's where they get to opt in. That's where they get to sign up for whatever you're offering. So again, it could be, um, you know, 10 templates. It could be, uh, it could be, like I said, it could be a cheat sheet. It could be a little mini video series. It could just be one video. It could be like you documenting yourself doing something or or showing or, or, um, maybe it's, it's, uh, you actually talking to them about certain areas of whatever you're teaching or you're sharing, or you're helping them solve, or maybe it's just, just a different form of consuming it. It doesn't even have to be something brand new, but it would be nice to have it, uh, be in line with what the, the book is already offering. Right. So again, like, like that, I'll give you an example. So this right here, right. I talk, uh, I'll give you another example in a uh, brand growth validation checklist. I basically give you a checklist for you to validate your own market. It explains everything on what to do, but then also I give you uh, a couple of videos there walking through that process. So what I could do is if I wanted to give that away for free, the brand growth validation checklist, which we do. And then if I wanted to upsell you and say, Hey, um, I shot, um, a video of me walking through that process. If you want, you know, I do it. It takes me like 30 minutes and I break everything down. If you want that, it's just $9 and 99 cents and you can kind of come along with me. Right. So that would be one way of doing that. I, I give you the thing, but then I'm going to show you more looking over my shoulder, or maybe it's me in the bass fishing boat showing you how I scope out banks of fishing, something like that. So hopefully that helped you. Troy says, yes. Uh, Salma, what? have been your biggest challenges with selling downloadable products. Really the only thing is people not being being able to get their downloads sometimes and that's because a lot of times here's what happens. People will they'll um they'll purchase through like let's say PayPal. And they purchase through PayPal but they have a different PayPal email address than the email that they signed up with. So that's the only issues that we've ever had. Other than that, people download the stuff and consume it or they don't consume it. And then that's why we follow up with them and we give them a good experience. We don't just give them the, the ebook and go buy. We give them the ebook and then we'll follow up through email and say, Hey, thanks for downloading. If you have any questions, let us know. And, uh, uh I'll be checking in with you to see on your progress. And then maybe two days later I go, Hey, at this time you should probably be about halfway through. You should have done this, this, and this. So I'm just following up with them. Um, but that's really about it is really just delivering the product, which is really easy though. And I would say it's a very small percentage, but that, that's a lot easier than trying to track down a package that was shipped, right? It's like, oh, I don't know when it's going to get there, right? But now, and that was one of the reasons why I went away from shipping this physically to people. I was shipping, not this one, but the I, I had a, another one before this called e, uh, Ecom uh, Biz Formula, which was more on the physical product side. Uh, it had a lot of brand building stuff in it, but it was also a lot of dig or uh, physical product stuff. But I was sending that. And then I found that people were like, hey, I, I haven't received it. It's been like a week. 
I really want that. And then I was giving them the digital download anyway. So then I'm like, that's a, that's just more of a hassle. So why not just give it to them on a digital form? And we have had very few people respond and say, Hey, I haven't gotten my download. And if they have a lot of times it's because their email that they bought with is not the same email that they registered with. So just a very simple fix though. That's easy. Is your paid ebook longer and deeper in comparison to a freebie? Uh, most of the time, yeah. The freebie is going to give them just a win, a quick win. So again, brand growth validation checklist, okay? That there is going to give you a quick win. Within 10 minutes, you're going to be able to go through that and you're going to be able to start looking at your market and probably have a good idea if your market is worth uh, building out a brand in. And then boom. You're done, right? You got it. You feel good. You, you, you're like, I got this thing, right? Or you're, or you're like, oh, wow. I realize my market isn't really as good as I thought. Hmm, thanks, Scott. Thanks for pointing that out, right? So that there just builds on you potentially wanting this, right? So yes, a lot of times the free item is a quick win. It's what can I give you? Like if I was going to do it in the bass fishing world, it would be like um, five tips to try to, uh, on your next bass fishing outing to catch more bass or to catch more, right? Or something like that. And then I would give them those five tips, but then I would then lead them into my full manual, my full guide, right? Um, so you want that quick win. Uh, Karen says, we talked about upselling on thank you page after they download the lead magnet. Can I use that page instead to ask the question, what are their concerns for the fall? And so what you're talking about, Karen, is your, um, your curriculum, your teaching stuff. Um, and so for you, um, you could ask a question there if you want to just survey them and you don't want to sell something there. Um, and I think, are you saying to, to do that in the meantime, instead of, uh, cause I'm, I'm trying to follow you. We talked about selling on the thank you page after they download the lead. Magnet. Can I use the page instead to ask a question? You can, but it's a great opportunity to give them more of what they just signed up for and, uh, and make an offer to them. But you can ask the question there, but why not ask the question in the follow-up email? Like the, the first email would be like, hey, just want to let you know, um, I'm just dropping in, just make sure you got everything. And if you have any questions, let me know. We'd love to hear from you. And that's it. Boom, done, right? So it's a it's a, a prime piece of real estate to have a thank you page. You don't always have to sell on it. You can ask a question, you can do a survey, but you do want to use that space. Uh, do you sell the book on your website or sales page? Uh, I think you're talking about that book, um, that there has its own sales page. Um, and there's also a couple of different funnels. We have one that's a paid funnel and we have one that's just an organic funnel. Um, and yes, it is on, um, it is on the website. I believe, I'm not sure if we put it on there after we, uh, <laughs> after we, uh, we just updated, um, the, the site, I know it will be. Uh, Christopher, what's up? When you update content on your site, do you also update the published date? Uh, you can, we don't usually put dates on our posts. Um, in some situations we do, in some situations we don't. Um, but yeah, if you are concerned with people knowing that it's updated information, you may want to put the date in there. What payment options do you give? Uh, does it depend on platforms like Gumroad or Kajabi or separate? Yeah, it depends on what you're trying to do. If you're just delivering an, an ebook or something, you can use a, a e junkie. Uh, I've used them for years. Uh, and then the other one is Gumroad is a great one. Um, so I would say those. Uh, Christopher, when you write uh, a post, like what are the best bass fishing lures for small ponds? What URL do you use? Um, XYZ.com slash what are best bass fishing lures for small ponds? Uh, yeah, that would be, that would be the URL. Um, if it's a URL though, that you're trying to create like me. Okay. For example, um, I was doing a workshop and I just went and said, okay, I'm going to create a pretty link and I'm going to use that as my link instead of it being a long link. Right. So that's also like, uh, ours was brandcreators.com forward slash workshop. Right. Um, so that's what we did there. Or if you have something like you're going to have something that you're going to be talking about a lot, right? Then you want to do something like this. And I'll throw this up here. Now, this is what it looks like. I bought the domain name brandcreatorsbook.com. That redirects to the page where you can find all the information out about this, right? 
Um, so that's also another option is to purchase a URL. But yes, if you are writing a blog post, it's going to have that at the end naturally because that's your title unless you change it, right? So yes, that would be how you would do that. All right, so I think that is going to uh, pretty much wrap this up for this little coffee talk. You guys have any other quick questions before we wrap here for the day? And I can tell that uh, you guys are pretty interested in this. And if I'm wrong, let me know and I will uh, back off and I won't talk anymore about these digital assets that we can be creating. Um, I think just from the, the feedback so far that I've been getting, um, it's it's wanted and it's needed. Um, and again, it's it's how do we simplify this process? Uh, Salama, how long did it take you to create your freebie? Did you already have an ebook planned? Uh, no, I didn't have an ebook planned. I just created the freebie first brand growth validation checklist. Um, if you go to this URL here, brandcreators.com, that'll take you to our main site. And then from there, you just go to checklist that there was just created way before I had anything even to offer on the back end. I just created it because I wanted to get people to raise their hand that are interested in building a brand. And I knew that that was the first step in them knowing if their market was even uh, able to be you know, built out. Um, so that always comes first. Um, so no, I did not have everything kind of laid out and planned. Uh, let's see here. Uh, when creating an ebook, is there an app that makes it easy to do? Um, why did you use, or what did you, who did you use to create ebooks and digital products? Um, so basically this one here, um, I did a lot of that myself, to be honest with you. I did it in uh, the program called pages on Mac. Um, but in the past, um, I have a really, really good, uh, writer and editor. Um, she actually, the reason why I didn't have her do this is she had, um, some personal, um, issues that she had to tend to. So wasn't available. I tried using someone else and, um, I just, it was just quicker for me to get this part done myself. Um, so I did a lot of that myself. I did a, a, some editing on the back end though, or someone else did some editing on the back end. Um, but you can basically just go hire someone on, on free up or Upwork or even Fiverr. Um, so it's not that complicated at all. Um, but I wouldn't overthink it. I would first lay it out and then start planning it. And that would be your blog post. So if you're already having blog posts written, you're already pretty much having it about 90% of the way there. Um, so I would always start there. And Kate, I think you're at the point now where you're starting to create blog posts. So I would start thinking about this. And then what I would do is I would start to get my writers or write them yourself as if you were um, going to be putting these into an ebook. So there's nothing really different there, or there's no difference there. It's really just about creating some really good content that resides on a, on a blog post, and then you're going to compile those. Um, so that's what I would do. Uh, how long did it take to write an ebook? That depends. Um, but I talked about it yesterday. I believe it was yesterday. If you want to plan it out over the next six weeks, do one post a week. One post a week, have five parts of the ebook, and then the sixth week is going to be just you editing it or having it edited, getting it ready to publish. So you could do it in six weeks. Heck, you can do it in a week, but you'd have to be creating that content and building that out. Another easy way to do it is if you're better about like recording yourself, just create like a little outline. And then for each post or each section, you would just have bullet points. And then in those bullet points, you would just talk like this and explain if you're the one teaching it or sharing. Um, if not, you could always have that same outline for an expert that you're interviewing, and then that would turn into the content. Um, but you don't really have to overthink it. There's so many easy ways to do it nowadays, but I would not start with a video course or some type of course. That's why I'm, I'm really going hard on this here because this is like step one. And it really can, from the, from the time that we're posting content, building our email list and all that stuff, this is probably the shortest way to start monetizing because it's your own product. Um, and then you can start crafting all of your messaging to really point towards that. Uh, let's see, how many eBooks could you sell from your site if your site generates 30,000 pages uh, views per month? Again, depends, Justin. Um, it, it depends on the topics that you're, um, you know, that you're uh, talking about. But a good test there would be to either find someone else's ebook, put it up there and see how many sell. That would be an easy test. Um, also, out of those 30,000 page views, are you collecting email addresses? And if you are, you know, 
let's uh, let's kind of look at that and see if that's a potential. Um, the one thing I would say, if you have 30,000 page views, you ought to put up some type of lead magnet. Just put it up using Hello Bar or something and see how many opt-ins you get from those 30,000 page views. Also, are those 30,000 page views on a specific topic, right? Because that's what we also need to identify. Hey, Mike. Thanks, Scott. These morning chats are awesome. Even those of us who aren't there yet, it's great to know and get an understanding of where we can go with it. Yeah. And you're in a great space for this, buddy. Uh, totally. Um, Microsoft Office works great as well if you want to do it on your own. Yeah. Uh, and then Kate says, thank you. Helpful tips. Love this topic. Awesome. All right, guys. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wrap this up. If you guys uh, are at the point where uh, you, uh, well, you want to uh, really learn more about just building out your brand with content, you do need to have a plan. And that's why I would definitely recommend grabbing this if you have not done so already. Brandcreatorsbook.com. And you see how that works too, guys? You just be totally transparent. Right? I'm coming on here today. I'm talking about a topic. It's not necessarily 100% this, but we know that I talk about creating content in here, right? If we take this here and apply it to what we just talked about today or take today's topic and apply it to that, it all intertwines. That's why we want to have something like this that we can re be referring back to, right? It just makes the most logical sense, all right? So if you have not grabbed a copy, you'll definitely want to do that. This is our playbook. This is what we go by inside of Brand Creators Academy. And oh, by the way, we're going to be opening July 6th for enrollment. So if you are not yet inside of Brand Creators Academy and part of our community, I would encourage you to check it out once we open on July 6th. We only open for five days, four times a year. So this will be one of those times. Um, if you are interested, I would definitely recommend going through the brand growth validation checklist. And that can be found at brandcreators.com. If you just click on checklist, it'll take you there. And yes, that is our, uh, our freebie, if you will, that will allow you to identify your market, but then also see the potential in your market way before you invest time and energy into it. Um, but this topic here today, we are going to be building one out inside of Brand Creators Academy in the near future. We're going to be showing exactly what we're doing. We're going to run it. It's a little test, a little experiment, and we're going to see if uh, we can actually take something, some actually some older assets that I've had in another market, and we're going to bring it to market and see if we can get some sales out of it. So that's going to be a fun little experiment that we're going to be doing inside of Brand Creators Academy. So again, if you're interested, make sure that you get on our uh, brand growth validation checklist list. So this way here, um, we can let you know. And also, if you just hang out here with us in the coffee talks, you'll also hear more about it. And then lastly, if you are uh, interested in checking out more of our coffee talks, go here. Boom. I'm going to put it up on the screen. If you're watching this on YouTube, you should see a playlist there. From there, go through all of the past coffee talks and uh, see if there's one there that pertains to where you are right now that you need help with and then consume that and then do that. All right. Hear what I said there? Consume that and do that. Don't just consume a whole bunch of hours of content. Consume it and do it. That's I'm a big believer in taking action. You guys know that. So let's make sure that we do it. All right. All right, guys, that's it. That's going to wrap it up for today. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me and, uh, and just being here and having some coffee together or tea or whatever you're drinking today. Um, but I did want to just say, you got to get out there and make it happen. But it all starts with building the brand, starting with your, your market and how to better serve your market and creating assets in your business, free content that Google will give you a little bit of traffic from a little bit and give you a lot of traffic, building that email list, and then building some form of digital asset that we can turn into uh, money down the line. So hopefully you guys are a little bit more motivated today. All right, guys, take care. Take action. I'll see you back here. Same place, same time tomorrow. All right. Take care. Take action. We'll talk to you soon.